On. This Prime Minister's disastrous inflationary policies and reckless spending on the backs of Canadians is sending more families into homeless shelters and food banks up 30 per cent. This Prime Minister's climate zealot ideology is keeping billions of dollars of investment in our responsible Canadian energy sector in the ground, increasing home heating costs 50 per cent to 100 per cent and making more families stay freezing in the dark. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for his inflationary problems that cause the Bank of Canada's interest rate hikes because of just... Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'm having a hard time following the particular logic that the Conservatives are putting forward today, saying that the reason people are struggling is because we were there to help them in record amounts during the pandemic. We were there uh, to keep food on the table for families uh, struggling from having lost their jobs because of the pandemic. We were there to keep small businesses open, restaurants, uh, neighbourhood stores open through a pandemic uh, because uh, we were there with supports because otherwise money wasn't coming in. We invested in the Canadian economy to get through these difficult times, and Conservatives say we shouldn't have done any of that. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Forest Lawn. Well, let's look at real responsible allies of ours. Let's look at Japan, Switzerland, Taiwan, Hong Kong, who took the right steps and kept inflation under 3%. They didn't print boatloads of money that was valueless and make sure that their citizens got put further into debt. And now Canada has the highest interest rate in the entire G7, pushing more families to food banks and homeless shelters, like we said before. The more this Prime Minister spends, the higher interest rates, the higher just inflation goes. Will the Prime Minister take responsibility for just inflation, causing higher Bank of Canada interest rate hikes, yes or no? I just want to remind the honourable members that you can't do indirectly what you can't do directly, and it's nice to play with words and everything, but please, like, you know, it's a little obvious there. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we have worked closely with allies over the past number of months and number of years uh, to ensure that we're increasing our opportunities for citizens, uh, that we're increasing our resilience in our supply chains, and we're working together. Global inflation is hitting all of our allies, whether it be the United States, the UK, France, uh, Germany, all our major partners are, are facing these challenges. Canadians are doing slightly better uh, than folks in those countries, but that's uh, cold comfort to too many Canadians who are struggling. That's why we're stepping up with direct and more help help with a restore, uh, return on the GST credit uh, that's going to land in Canadians' uh, bank accounts in the coming weeks, and dental and rental support that inexplicably Conservatives continue to oppose. Here, here. Uh, the Honourable Member for Charbot au Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, we all remember that the fi minister, Finance Minister said that she could afford to increase debt to record levels because of low interest rates. But now that she's gunning for the PM's job, she's changing her message to warn Canadians about the dangers of rising interest rates and that the government needs to tighten its belt. But millions of Canadians can't make ends meet. Can the Prime Minister confirm that he's going to cancel the carbon tax. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Quebecers and all Canadians know full well that climate change is a reality that we have to prepare for. And we also have to look at it as an opportunity to grow our economy by going greener. And that's exactly what we're doing by putting a price on pollution. We can no longer pollute freely in our country, and the Conservatives want to go back to that time, but we know that we have to move forward. We have to be there to put a price on pollution and put money back into the pockets of Canadians, and that's exactly what we're doing. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg au Saint-Charles. What's clear for Quebecers and Canadians, Mr. Speaker, is that the Bank of Canada's key rate went up for, for the sixth time to 37 percent. It has an impact on mortgages and that Canadians, the money Canadians need to leave for living. Inflation, accelerated by historic liberal spending, is taking a bite out of Canadians' pensions and wages. Meanwhile, the PM is turning a deaf ear to Canadians' frustration, frustrations 
When is he going to act with compassion and stop raising taxes? Mr. Speaker, while the Conservatives continue to talk about cutting services that Canadians are counting on, whether it's EI or pensions, we are going to be there to help Canadians who are vulnerable and also to invest in the middle class. And we're going to continue to fight against climate change. We know that investing to fight against climate change is the best way to prepare a robust economy with opportunities for everyone in coming years. And that's exactly what we're going to continue to do. And that's Conservatives want to encourage us to cut services. We're not going to do this. The Honourable Member for